Hi everyone, welcome back to our devotion time. Today is March 4th and our devotion is titled, How to Overcome. From Revelation 21, 7. He who overcomes shall inherit all things and I will be his God and he shall be my son. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for this devotion and we thank you for teaching us today about overcoming this world, overcoming the things that we experience in this life. We praise you, Lord. We open our hearts and our minds to you today to receive from your word. Holy Spirit, we pray for wisdom and understanding. And I ask you to give me your words, not my own, that your will would be done. In Jesus' name, amen. Weekly, it seems, we encounter stories of people who overcame odds, great odds in life. Perhaps it's a soldier who lost limbs and has regained mobility through prosthetics and perseverance. Or maybe it's a child born into disadvantaged circumstances who went on to achieve the pinnacle of success in his or her profession. Or perhaps it's an average person who overcame sickness, family, or financial calamity, or great discouragement. It seems overcoming is part of our human DNA, part of being in the image of God. Think of what Jesus overcame in his time on earth, never faltering on his way to the cross. It was he who told his disciples that they would face tribulation in the world, but that through him, they and we can overcome the world. John sixteen thirty three. Christ, the ultimate overcomer, is in us. Colossians one twenty seven, And he who is in us is greater than he who is in the world. 1 John 4.4 4. Christ in us is the power we have, we have to overcome the world. Begin your day by reaffirming that in Christ you can overcome whatever the day may bring. Praise the Lord. So let's grab our Bibles and um, I'm going to take us into some scripture. We're going to hit a few scriptures today. Praise the Lord. So you might want to pull out a pen and jot them down just in case. So first we're going to go to Corinthians chapter 15. I meant to put this back up here. There we go. Okay, and we're going to read 15 verse 57. The sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So I wanted us to focus on the fact that we have victory. We fight from a position of victory. We do not fight for the victory. We fight from a position of overcomers. We've already overcome this world. And it's just a matter of us walking in that victorious life. Amen. Learning how to, oopsie, sorry guys, learning how to daily accept that we have already been given the gift of uh, overcoming victorious spirit by God. And I want us to go to Philippians 4 verse 13. And this here tells us, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. That word in the Greek, all, means the same thing it means in English, all. There is nothing that you and I face every single day that we cannot overcome through Jesus. Amen. We are strong through him because he has overcome the world and given us that same overcoming spirit that lives inside of us. Let's go over to, um, we're going to jump over to the Psalms for one. My page is bent right there. Okay, and go to chapter 108, and we're going to read verse 13. With God, we shall do valiantly. It is he who will tread down our foes. Another version, let me see here real quick. Oh, look, I've got, because of our Bible study, I've got all these different Bibles here. Let's look in here. I don't know what it says in the Amplified, so let's check it out. Psalm 108, verse 13. Through and with God, we shall do valiantly, for, it, for he it is who shall tread down our adversaries. So see, I was going to say there's another version that says victoriously. We do victoriously. And it's through God that we are valiant. 
that we are brave, that we are victorious, that we are overcomers. And it's him who treads down our foes. Okay. So when you have a foe in life, a situation in life that's attacking you, know that God is going to do battle for you. Don't wonder if he's going to. Don't doubt. Don't go into the situation with unbelief in your heart, but go into the situation knowing that your God is able and that he is a victor and that he is the one who's fighting your battles. If you'll let him fight for you. Many of us want to, we want to cry out to God, but then we want to hold the reins and we want to keep fighting the battle for ourselves because there's that level of us that just, we feel like if we're not in control, then, you know, we don't, we don't feel secure that the battle's being fought. Amen. And we've talked a lot in the past about God. He fights behind the scenes. We don't see into the spirit realm. We have no idea who God is moving, where he's moving them, who he's whispering in the ear of, what he's saying and what he's doing, but he is working all things together for our good. We are already victorious because we are children of God. We belong to him through the blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And Jesus overcame this world. And he gave us that same overcoming, victorious spirit. Let's go to James, verse 1. And we're going to read um, verses 1 through 5. And then we're going to read 12 through 14. Okay? And all in chapter 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes in the dispersion. Greetings. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Now some of your Bibles will say um, perseverance. Okay? Steadfastness, perseverance. It's that stick to can do spirit. Okay. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives generously to all without reproach and it will be given to him. Amen. Now we know though it says, but let him ask in faith with no doubting for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. For that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man and stable in all his ways. So when we go to God, we need to understand he's already told us to be confident in him. He never told us anywhere in the word to doubt if he wants to help us. He never told us anywhere in the word to not believe because there might be that chance that he doesn't want to help us. Nowhere in the word will you find God saying that. He tells us, to come boldly to him. He tells us to come confidently to his throne. Through Jesus Christ, through what Jesus did on that cross, we can enter into his throne room confidently. And he says, ask me for wisdom. Ask me without doubting. I'm telling you, stop doubting. He's literally, he's telling us, don't be like that. Because if you're going to be like that, I'm not going to be able to help you. Okay? Let's go to down here to verse uh, 12 and 14. Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. For when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desires. Okay, so when we have we come to a situation, we need to be able, we talked about this earlier in the week, we need to be honest with ourselves, we need to not blame God, and we need to remain steadfast in the Lord. And when we find ourselves falling into a situation or, or being tempted, okay, just realize and, and surrender that to the Lord. And don't walk in what the enemy is tempting you with. Don't turn toward that. Turn away from it. Be steadfast. Turn back to God. Because as you do that, you're going to become more and more strengthened against that thing that the enemy tries to use to tempt you. Okay? The more you say no, the weaker his voice will get. 
and you will continue to walk steadfastly in victory. Amen. We're all going to go through situations in life. Some are brought on by others, but I'm going to, I want to, I want to, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I would like to propose that many, many, many of the things we go through in this life are brought on by a door we open ourselves. Okay. And it's no condemnation, no judgment. I'm just saying if we sit back by ourselves and really be honest with ourselves and think about it, how many doors do we open ourselves inadvertently, probably, but we open them and it allows the enemy to come in and bring about situations, temptations that we wouldn't actually welcome or invite or you know, say, come on into it, but, but something we have done. And it even says here, it's your temptation. I mean, it's your, uh, you're enticed because of your own desires. So there's, there's things in our lives that cause those temptations to come. There's a proverb that says no bird alights without a cause. Okay. Which means there's always a reason why something comes that's negative or positive to our life. Nothing lights upon our life, lands upon our life without a cause somewhere. Okay. And so that's something that we need to, we need to be aware of. We need to be acknowledging. There needs to be acknowledgement there that there's a possibility. And that comes to play what we talked about again this week, asking God to reveal anything that's hidden in our lives. Amen. And it helps us to walk more and more victoriously and be more and more of overcomers as we're honest with ourselves. And as we have this relationship with God, where we understand that he's not placing those things in our lives many times. And I've heard, especially my grandmother used to say it all the time. Oh, the Lord must want me to be, you know, I'm, I'm sick because God's punishing me or I'm sick because God wants me to learn something from this or I'm, or this is happening because, you know, God must have let this happen because of this or because of that. And it's like a lot of the things that I believe my grandma put on God were actually brought on by something, you know, else. It was brought on by the enemy and a lot of her own choices. But she had a hard time facing that. So she would say, and it was almost like it was just the way that people talked. And a lot of, um, praise God, a lot of that kind of speech has been overcome in this generation. But there was a generation that just blamed God for everything. But then put a, a smiley face on it. You know, I blame God for this, but it's okay because he's God. And so obviously he did this to me, but it's okay. And do you know what I'm saying? And we need to understand it is not God who's tempting us. It is not God who's putting these things on us, but we are opening doors. I'm going into a, a area I didn't mean to go into today, but I, after reading this scripture, I really feel like we need to have that, um, we need to admit that to ourselves. We need to, you know, be open enough with ourselves to say, I'm not going to blame the Lord for this or say, you know, this is God's will. If I've actually done something that invited this into my life. So I just advise again to pray about those things and be steadfast and turn away from the things that the enemy brings at you because God is always makes a way of escape. Let's go over to, um, I'm just looking at my list to make sure I don't miss anything because I went out of order a little bit. Um, did we, no, second Corinthians. Let's do second Corinthians. Okay. And we're going to go to chapter 12, verse nine through 10. But he said to me, but, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may rest upon me for the sake of Christ. Then I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, 
persecutions and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. So when we're in the middle of situations, like Paul had this thorn in the flesh, and I truly believe it was his eyesight. Um, you know, and it's funny, it happened before he was a believer, but if you think about it, Paul's behavior and his choices led him to the road to Damascus because he was choosing to not believe in, in Christ. He was choosing to kick against the goats and inevitably God had to confront him to gain his attention and he had to go face to face with God. And when Paul was struck blind on that road, all throughout the rest of the New Testament, Paul talks about signing his name in large letters because he can't see good. It's it's a well-known documented thing throughout the word that, that does talk about Paul's eyesight. And a lot of theologians argue about it. But just from my personal belief, and that I believe that that's what Paul dealt with was his vision. And, you know... It, that wouldn't have happened to him if he hadn't been so stubborn and turned his back on God. You know, he thought he was doing this great work for God, Jehovah God, but he, instead he was actually coming against God. And he, you know, he was, he put himself in that position where Jesus had to strike him blind on the road to Damascus, had to come in bodily form and confront him there on that road. And, and after that, he dealt with that weakness in his life and God used it for his good. God used it to show grace in his life. So Paul praised God, became humble and he accepted that. And even, even was content. He tells us he was content and he gave God the glory. Amen. My point is this, He had gone through all these things with the Lord, enduring this weakness. He kind of brought that weakness upon himself. But after the fact, he walked in it and he did a great work for God and was a victorious overcomer despite that weakness. And that is something that each one of us, we, we each have something in our lives that we have to let God's grace carry us through that, whatever that thing is. And as we're steadfast and we don't turn away from God, but turn toward God, he is going to continue to give us victory after victory after victory. We're going to continue to overcome more and more and more in this life and grow stronger and stronger in our faith and in being the reflection of Christ on this earth. Let's go to um, 1 John. Chapter 5, verse 4. And it tells us, For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? And each one of us believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Praise the Lord. So we are overcomers. We are victorious. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your word today. And Father God, thank you that even though Many times we open doorways that, Lord, you're right there to give us your grace, that it would be sufficient to walk us through those situations and those times, and that we continue, are able to continue to give you praise and glory and be the overcomers that you've created us to be. Thank you, Lord, that your grace is sufficient and that, Father God, as we walk steadfastly alongside you, allowing you to guide us and lead us, that, Lord, we're going to see the victory every time because we belong to you. Help us to be confident, not to be double-minded. Help us to always 
know that our God is on our side, that our Father is on our side, and that you love us. Thank you that you tread upon our enemies and that we don't have to. Thank you, Father God, that your mercy and your grace and your goodness are sufficient for us. We give you praise and glory today. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Guys, have a wonderful day. Be blessed. Be safe. And I love you very much. Thank you so much for being with me today. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye.